I've been reading and answering your comments, and it seems like there's a lot of Walking Dead fans out there. So, this video will teach you how to draw Rick Grimes step by step. You'll learn along the way that any image can be broken down into simple shapes. All you'll need is a pencil and some paper. Let's begin. Step 1. Draw a rectangle that's 3 and a quarter inches by 4 inches. Step 2. Use the rectangular shape as a reference point and then add the two triangular shapes. Step 3. Add the next few shapes. Step 4. Add the line to the left-hand side of the rectangle. Step 5. Add the crescent moon shape. Step 6. Add the lines to the right-hand side of the rectangle. Step 7. Add the new shape to the left side. Step 8. Add the two new shapes for the pinky. Step 9. Add the ring finger. Step 10. Add the middle finger. Step 11. Add the thumb. Step 12. Add the bottom of the gun. It sort of looks like an upside down padlock. Step 13. Add the trapezoid shape. Step 14. Add the bottom barrel of the gun. Step 15. Add the next part of the gun. Step 16. Add the top of the gun. Step 17. Add the shape for the goatee. Step 18. Continue the beard shape. Step 19. Add the shape for the nose. Notice that it is the same height as the shape for the goatee. Step 20. Add the shapes for the eye sockets. Step 21. Add the shapes for the eyes. And notice that there's one eye length in between the two shapes. Step 22. Complete the forehead and the hair shape. Step 23. You can't hear walkers if you don't have ears. Give Rick some ears. Hey, it's Merrill, and uh, welcome to the uh, shading part of the video. And um, I know that the steps were... Hey, it's Merrill, and welcome to the shading part of my video. And uh, I'm going to help you turn this jumble of shapes into Rick... Uh, Zombie Hunter Grimes. So, uh, let's get started with that. Um, we're going to start with the face. That was kind of the last thing that we did with the step-by-step. -step. So let me zoom in. And we have this uh, bunch of shapes. Now let's turn this into Rick Grimes. Alright, so starting out with the 2H pencil. I like the H's because it helps you build tones slowly. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. So, uh, I'm going to take a look and I always consider the eyes to be the most important part. If you get the eyes, you could pretty much get the whole thing. Um, hair could be out of the place. Um, nose is pretty important, uh, but the eyes are super important. Let me zoom in even a little bit further. So, they're really in shadow. That, that's one thing that you need to know. Eyes have to be in a lot of shadow. And there's a darker region right over in here. So I'm going to do some shading right over on the side. And what I do on one side, I am going to do on the other. Not always the case, um, especially with light, but, um, you know, for this, that's the case. 
Now he's got eyebrows and I'm going to put it in just as a soft line for right now. Um, and same thing on this side. He's got, problem is he's got lighter eyebrows. So this is going to be something that we use the eraser on later. Um, it's a little bit uh, darker than the highlight, uh, as you can see over in the reference image on the side, but overall it's, it's pretty dark. Let's do some shading right over this region, right over in here, and right over here. And we can take an eraser, and we can get rid of these edges. Edges are a very important part. Um, First you get the shape, then you get the edges of the shape. I always uh, teach people. I'm also going to erase the bridge of the nose in here. Because it's more highlights and shadows. So we're going to put that there. And he's got a, uh, a scowl, as they say. You know, his eyebrows are down. He's got a grumpy face. He's been shooting too many zombies, too many people that he know have uh, passed on. And not the happiest person in the world. Um, and we're trying to capture that with what we're doing right now. So let's take a look. Going to do some hatching. I guess I didn't fully erase this side. So let me do that. And this is really important. So his eyebrows right by a line, a double line. One goes right in the middle in between the two eyes. The other one goes uh, right on the edge of the brow. And there's smaller, smaller lines too. So the muscles of the forehead are kind of pushing together and leaving those lines. He's also got some wrinkle lines up here or grumpy lines, whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to put them in light for now. We'll develop them as we go on. If you've never done this before, just take a chance. Just do it. And you'll see what becomes of this. I'll admit, this is going to be one of my tougher tutorials. I usually do just faces, and the problem with doing the entire body is, um, you know, the face is kind of like away so you don't get to see as many details. But I'll walk you through it. Just stick with me. Alright, so I'm going to do some light shading right over in here. And I'm going to then erase right over in here. So that we can still see the lines, but uh, we're going to put our own hair texture in, and he's got wavy curly hair. Curls for the girls, I guess. So we're going to follow that texture, and we're going to put it in. And even the edge, we're going to erase. because there really is no edge. It's a bunch of different tones. And most of this is in highlight. I'm even going to soften the sides. Keep it light, keep it soft. If there's an area that we get darker, it's in here right at the front. It'll start looking like him once we put the uh, beard in. So these lines over here, they're going to be darker than the eyebrows, and that's very important. Light eyebrows dark lines. These ones up on the forehead, those ones are going to be uh, lighter than the dark ones between the eyes, but that's a real feature of his face that adds to his likeness.
and this side of the hair can be darker than the other. All right, so I'm going to sharpen my pencil actually. And we're going to really need to do details in here. So his eyes kind of go down. And it's very flat on the bottom. So I'm going to make the corner of this shirt a little bit lighter. I'm going to put a little indication in and note for me uh, that this is going to be lighter. Then I see kind of an L shape that's happening over here. It doesn't matter if we get this exactly. Um, if you're going to put your energy on something, put it on the likeness. This is just bonus stuff. Um, so I'm just going to put a markation right in here and make sure that I give it uh, a little bit of shape. So this is another fold that goes up and in. And right in here is a dark region. Kind of curves in. And we have a dark region right over in here. And a dark region down here. And right up, this is going to be dark. If yours does not look exactly like mine, don't sweat it. Like, if you're stressing out, uh, Meryl, I can't follow this. Um, yours is not going to look exactly like mine. That's okay. Let it be. Everybody's going to judge this on the face. The pose is pretty iconic also, so that will help you with this. And just in general, this big triangle that's right here, this is a very dark shape. It gets lighter down here, but overall, it's a dark shape. So let me do some hatching over in here to push back this triangular shape. Trust me, as we develop this, um, if you stick with it, you're going to like what you get. And really, if you, uh, if you do one of these videos with me, you don't really need to go along with the shading part for next time. Because um, you kind of learn how to do it. But it's a process. Once you master the process, uh, you will be in a better place in terms of um, in terms of rendering. All right, so this is going to be dark over in here, right underneath the arm, and the arm is going to be a lot lighter than even the highlights. No, that's not true. The arm's going to be lighter than the shirt. The highlights on the shirt are going to be a little bit lighter than the arm. And we want to make it look like it's rolled up. So I'm going to push really hard in here. And I'm going to make these curls in here. And these light parts, I'm going to do a little hatching over them. Alright, over in here, there is a lighter part as well, which we're going to mark off gets darker over in here but I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna mark it right in here so lighter area it's not gonna be that light but it's like I'm leaving notes for myself that's what I'm doing now this edge has to go because if you look at the reference image there's no dark edge that's happening there you can create an edge that's lighter but you see how that looks different right over in here very different and then right at the edge we can leave this as one of our lighter uh, areas and I could take some away over here to leave indications of a fold in the clothing now these, these we also need to pull out. 
but in order to do that we have to darken it first. So right along the fold here it's going to be a little bit darker so let me put that in. And you see even as I hatch over this highlight it just darkens it a little. That's what I love about these 2H pencils. I'm going to add a few more of these folds, but I see from the image that they turn in here. And we have a darker value right over in here. And it gets lighter up here, but we could fix that. You see, in order to take away, we need to add. Uh, so in other words, in order to take away with the eraser, we need to add some hatching first. Otherwise, you're going to be erasing on a blank piece of paper. All right, now watch this. So now that I have this in, now I can start pulling this out again. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's not going to be this light when I'm done. And right up here at the top, let me take these edges off. Whenever there's a highlight, there's not going to be super strong edges, you know, black edges. And this part of it, uh, not the face, but this part of it, it's okay if you don't follow the reference image exactly. All right, so let's darken this. This is darker than this, which is kind of throwing the image off. Let me do some more hatching, then we'll pull this out again. But watch, even as you hatch over it, look, it remains. See, it's still there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this almost as dark as over here. Even the highlight up here, I'm going over it again. And there's all sorts of little folds in here. And let's make this very dark. And this very dark. Kind of pressing all the way. Gonna hatch the arm just a bit to darken it. And there's some darker areas in here, some folds that are created that I'm gonna put right into this super dark area here that I haven't fully developed. going to try to keep this pocket and what's going to be tricky is this button is actually a highlight but we're going to have to come back and pull that a little bit later all right let me switch over to my B pencil now so B is going to be darker than the uh, H pencil and it's going to allow me to build tones um, more quickly. So watch this. I'm barely pressing on this, but compared to the 2H pencil, we're getting dark fast. Compare that to a 6B pencil, um, don't really even have to press, and it'll get dark. But yeah, we want to start building these dark tones. Theoretically, you could do a lot of it um, you know, with the H pencil, but to get those super darks, you really have to go to something else. And this definitely calls for uh, some shading that's super dark. If 
anything, this is like a mini tutorial within a tutorial. So you learn how to how to um, draw folded clothing or clothing that has folds in it. All right, let's go back to these edges right over here. There's a dark value right in here. And I'm seeing some lines. And let's go back into this. Now I could take my blending stump and I'm going to push some of this a little bit over. And look at this. Let me zoom in so you could see this. Look at the variety of tones that's happening. That's what you want. That's what moves the eyes around. Now, also over in here, let's see if you could see it. Yeah. Over in here, I'm noticing on the edge, there's this triangle shape. And there's like a V that's happening above. And right on the edge, it's very dark. So what I could do is I could take this. And put it in. And I'm going to zoom out in a little bit and you'll see how different it looks. This going down here, overall this is a lighter area of the shirt. But this area is dark, dark, dark up in here. Alright, so let me zoom out so you can see. It looks like he's got, uh, looks like he's got sweating issues. <laughs> but we will fix that. Um, yeah, let's, uh, there we go. I'm going to do some hatching right above this. I'm going to use my blending stump. And you can use the eraser to pull this out again, soften the edge. All right, so let's go back to the neck. I'm gonna do some uh, hatching right in here. Because that's gonna be darker, his beard's gonna be darker. All right, so now to finish off the shirt, now that we've built up the dark tones for it, um, I'm looking to see where those lines indeed did lie, and I'm trying to put them in. And looking at the uh, areas like right around the collar, like this is very dark. So I want to make sure that that stands out as my darkest part of the shirt. And also some of the folds like over in here, this has got to be dark. And there's a few lines, so we have a line here. And right underneath that collar, or 
pocket, I'm sorry, right underneath the pocket there's also a few of these lines. And they go all the way to right about here. Kind of made that a little bit too wide in here, but that's all right. Shading goes all the way down to the bottom over here, and I'm actually going to darken this area in here. I'm liking the creases over in here. I'm just going to darken around some areas. Make sure that that's dark. Uh, the area right underneath should be super dark. And over in here, darker. But I'm making lines. going to do some light hatching. No, not light hatching. I'm going to do some moderate hatching over in here. So I got one side done. And to finish up, I'm going to pull the darker parts into the lighter parts. This also has to be darker in here. And this might stand to be a little darker. Once again, get rid of that edge. And recreate it but in a different way. And I could always go back and fix that a little bit later. Now for the other side, this is dark. I'm gonna create a little texture here. So you'll, what I mean by texture is like these lighter areas. So it could seem like the, fold, the clothing is folded and this side's a lot more simple. I'm going to leave a hard edge on the end to this side, but not to the other. And finally, just pull a little bit out at different points. Alright, so now let's focus on the hand and the gun. And that pretty much is now, the right shirt. Right now that looks like a hot mess, so we're going to clean that up. Let me go back to my 2H pencil. And right at the bottom of the fingers, um, it's going to be a little bit darker. You can also refine the shapes of them. I think I'm going to need to do that.
I'm going to put a nail at the top so it looks like it's wrapping around. Adjust the edge. I'm going to darken the hole for the gun. Hatch in the whole thing for now. Hatch the bottom. the end of this there's two circles I'm going to build up the tones of the arm. Now I'm going to take my uh, B pencil. I'm going to go darker over here on the sides. I'm going to fill in the circles. Make sure the bottom is darker. I'm just going to pick different points. If you don't go by how the gun looks, that's okay. I'm going to pick different points to add shape to. Now you see, we have to think of this as a composition. So let's look at this. You have dark down here. We kind of want to match with the gun what we see in the shirt. The area on the inside is going to be darker in general, so keep that in mind. You don't even have to go all the way across, but different points in the gun just darken. It'll be a believable gun. You can improv a little bit, that's fine. I do it all the time. Thumb I'm going to put in. bottom one I'm going to hatch. Now I'll take my eraser I'm right at the top because the light is coming from the top. I'm just going to pull some highlights out. I'm going to darken the back.
I'm going to refine the edge and erase what's on the outside. And firm up this shape in here. And make it two planes. So here's one and here's two. The first one by the hand we're going to make darker. The second one we're going to make dark but not quite as dark. Now it looks like he's holding a gun. So um, now we're I want to find it a to little the, bit later. Into the drawing. We have graphite on all parts of the drawing and now we have to kind of tie everything together. We have some dark tones in the shirt. We have some we dark have to tones in the gun. A little bit. Um, dark tones in his eyes which is of course, we appropriate considering later. the uh, nature of the show, uh, but now we have to really make it look like uh, Rick Grimes. And right now, you got somewhat of a likeness, but it's not there yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus especially on the face for the ending. And I'm looking at those tones that I have in the drawing. Uh, I, I want it to be an interesting drawing, too. And I, I'm all about moving tones around. And wherever you see a variety of tones, um, you know, say in one area of the shirt, um, you know, you might want to feature that same, uh, that same uh, tonality in another part. So that's what I'm going to do uh, with the head. And I put the goatee in first and I put the neck in next. Um, I'm going to have to shape up that neck, uh, really consider the edges, um, basically put it in. So just as you've seen me do with other parts, I'm going to do some hatching, uh, sometimes with the 2B pencil, sometimes with the uh, 2H pencil, sometimes with the B pencil. Um, and I'm considering the edges, um, I'm softening the edges in some parts, and I'm, har I'm sharpening the edges on the other side. The eyes, I'm go I've made a decision to go uh, darker on. Uh, the reference image, you really can't see his eyes. You kind of see him squinting, and you see the musculature on his forehead uh, quite a bit and I kind of want to feature that so I'm going darker I'm using the 2H pencil for that and um, you know I just kind of hatched over those eye shapes okay so now you see me uh, working on the left side of the face um, oh and now I went over to the right side of the face I'm trying to push it back and uh, I'm using the 2H pencil for that more hatching you know if you want to go a tone darker uh, that's what I always resort to. I do a, a layer of tones uh, with the 2H pencil, just like you saw me do on the right-hand side of the head. Uh, I'm also going to do that same pencil um, uh, on the, uh, the chest. And I'm trying to get the uh, differentiation between the left side of the face and the right side of the face. We have light and dark, um, kind of poetic with the character. My wife is nuts about Walking Dead. I've seen my share of episodes, but, um, yeah, she's the huge fan. Um, yeah, so uh, going again on the other eye, on the right eye, um, his left eye, the eye on our right-hand side. So I'm darkening the part right now that uh, actually is going to be lighter, but uh, I'm going to use my eraser to pull that out. I'm adding little things to the face. Right now his hair looks blonde. You're going to see me address that in a few moments. You know, that would be good tonality if somebody had, like, blondish hair, but um, he is, uh, he's got dark hair. I'm starting to get uh, happy with the way that the face came out, but now it's just the beard and the hair um, and adding those highlights. So you'll see me um, address the hair really quickly here, and the trouble with doing this is once you do that, uh, you have to address other areas. Um, you're developing this evenly, uh, all parts together, and you know now after I put the hair in, um, we lost that likeness. So now we have to adjust the face. Everything is still there, you just have to bring the right parts up. So I put those um, uh, wrinkle lines in the forehead in. And that helped. Now I'm going to go in with the tones. I'm going to fix the beard. And you see how those little uh, touches added so much. 
and also messing up his hair a little bit more, uh, adding more squiggles to it. Um, lengthening the eye. All of these things, you know, bring the likeness back. You know, make it Rick again. So if you're trying this at home, just know you have to um, you, you have to struggle with the end uh, a bit. You have to um, add a little bit. You have to take a little bit away. Um, and that's true with any drawing that you do. You look at what you're drawing. Uh, you're looking at your reference image, and you try to match. Um, I mean, if that's what you intend to do, of course. Um, and this is meant as a study, so, um, you know, if that's uh, what you're intending to do, you just add a little bit, you take a little bit away. Um, anyway, I hope uh, that this uh, video has been, uh, like, really informative to you. Uh, if you like it, if you want more videos like this, like, I don't really do bodies that med, uh, that much uh, in my videos. If you want more videos like this, uh, please hit the thumbs up button. Also, leave me comments. I do check my comments, and I try to, um, I try to respond to as many of them as possible. Um, you know, love to see those requests. Uh, that helps me a lot. If you like somebody else's request, one-up it. That, uh, that helps a lot, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm happy to be uh, doing this for you guys, and, um, you know, I want to do the right stuff for you. So leave those requests, and uh, as always, thank you for watching.